welcome back to Farm Girl Diaries. My name is Caitlin, and you're just going to hang out with me in the kitchen today because today is supposed to be 93 degrees, so that means I am not doing anything outside, and we're going to be hanging inside today. So I'm actually going to break this up into a couple different videos because we have a lot of different projects to do, and when I do my videos, I do like to kind of um, have clear topics. So the one thing we're doing right now is making kombucha, and I actually forgot how to make kombucha, so I had to go back and find my kombucha recipe um, and figure out how to do this. So, um, so one of the things we're doing, I do want to keep them as separate videos for that reason. I can go back and reference, or if you like it, you can go back and find it. So we're gonna, we have this video today, this first video, it's just going to be a lot of odds and ends for wanting to do. Again, um, we have a lot of things to do in the kitchen, and I'm just bringing you along for it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make kombucha. So I'm going to show you. I made my kombucha scoby for the first time last April. So it is May 2023. Well, it's June now, 2023. My scoby, I started in March 2022. So I made kombucha throughout the summer. And I think I just got tired of it and I stopped making it. And I thought again when that year mark hit, do I want to make uh, kombucha again? Do I want to do it? And I honestly have checked my scoby. Um, but I honestly have not fed my scooby in probably almost a year. So my scooby, my kombucha has just been sitting in my dining room covered, completely forgotten. Um, so I wasn't honestly sure if my scooby was going to be good. But then I went, um, well yesterday, so my grocery store has this like deal where if things are getting ready to, their best buy date is coming up, they'll give it to you on sale, like 50% off. So they had this Nature's Promise organic um, kombucha. And this one's a mango kombucha. I got a mint lemonade and then I had a raspberry ginger yesterday. And so when I saw this sh show up on the, the app, I kind of was like, oh, I could do kombucha. And I think I kind of realized that I think kombucha for me is going to be a summer drink. Because I'm excited. I think my plan this evening is to drink one of these kombuchas as I walk around the garden, as I water the garden. I like to do like cocktails and com cocktails and kombucha, <laughs> cocktails and garden. That's kind of my thing. Um, but sometimes I don't. I'm not in the mood for a cocktail, but I want to drink in the garden. Enter kombucha. So I think I'm realizing that I like the idea of kombuchas in the summertime. Um, I don't know. So we're gonna make kombucha. <laughs> so that's that's my thought process. And so I went and I just grabbed my kombucha and when you look at that scoby that is a massive scoby and then the top of him i don't know if i can get you the top but this is a incredibly incredibly healthy looking let's see if i can get a little bit of the top i can't get my camera to lower to show you the top of this scoby but this is an incredibly incredibly healthy scoby and now that i'm moving it around it's kind of sinking but it will rise back to the top and you can see all of these different layers. I could peel any of these off and give them to somebody else to start their own kombucha. Or if I wanted to start a second one, I could start a second one. So that's really exciting. Like I said, I haven't touched this kombucha in probably close to a year. So I'm feeling really good about, about this. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to get a second batch going. I'm not 100% sure of the ratios. Um, I didn't spend it. My, video, my computer video was 45 minutes, and I just kind of <laughs> zoomed through it. And I think I have it, but it's going to be fine. So I have eight cups of water. I'm going to add one cup of sugar, and we're going to bring that to a boil. And then I'm going to add eight to nine tea bags. Eight or nine tea bags. Once it's in a boil, where's my lid? I need a lid. And then we're at our tea bag. Once that is cool, we will reserve one cup of this kombucha. We'll add it to that. Add it back into here. I think I'm actually gonna get this scooby out if I can without messing it up, and see if I can't give this jar a wash. Um, maybe I can just get this. I don't know. I want to try to get this jar a wash. Um, and then let it sit. This kombucha is pure vinegar. I am not going to lie. It is pure vinegar. 
pure vinegar. So I actually don't think this is the first bath I'm gonna drink. I think I'm actually gonna let it go twice. Well, we'll see. Um, I think I need to let it go twice to maybe get rid of that vinegary, as vinegary as it is. I'm not sure. We'll let it go and then we'll taste it after a week and see where we're at. If we're still a little bit on the too vinegary side, we'll do another batch and we'll try to try to get rid of that vinegary vinegary-ness, which will be, we can get rid of it, no problem. It just might take a little bit longer. So I'll put this to the side because we don't need this guy yet, but I'm excited to know that my kombucha, Scooby, has lasted for a year with no problems. So I'll put this kombucha back in the fridge. I'm really excited for this. Okay. The next thing we're going to work on before it gets too hot, it is 10:15 in the morning, so it's actually not too hot yet, but it's getting there. I have a lot of my zucchini bread jam left over. I canned this two years ago. Um, I don't have a video on it because I think I did this before I started doing YouTube. Um, but I know I got this recipe from Rachel at that 1870 homestead, and I don't like raisins, so I added cranberries, dried cranberries, into this instead of using the raisins. And that has worked fine. Um, oh my god, it's already hot in here. That puts up a lot of heat. I am going to invest. I think I might even buy it today. I'm going to buy an electric water heater because that's already hot. Anywho, we're going to pop forward and pretend like I don't feel all this heat just coming up behind me. Um, so I got this recipe from Rachel, that 1870 homestead, and it is good. It is good. I'm not going to lie and say it's not good. It is good. Uh, I just don't know what to use it for. So I have a lot of this because that zucchini goes far. So I have a good amount of this. Um, the problem that I have with this is that I just don't use it for. So I only really use it in cupcakes. I did get a lot of this and I still probably have like eight half pints left. So I make these spice cupcakes which I think are very good. They're incredibly moist. Um, if I make this again, and I'm honestly not sure, just because the only thing I do with it is make these spiced cupcakes. Maybe I'll make a spell match, I don't know. But I don't think I'll put the cranberries or the raisins in it. Because just for me, personally, that's when I'm using it in cupcakes. I want it to be like a soft cake, and then not have the occasional like dried fruit in there. Maybe some people like that. It's not bad, but it's not my favorite. So, I'm just trying to use this up, so I'm going to make some cupcakes. So I just have one of my spiced cake mixes that I dumped in here. To be completely honest, I have no idea <laughs> what is in this bowl. All I wrote when I wrote the directions was what I need to add to this. So I have no idea what is in here. So that sucks for both you and for me because <laughs> I have one more of these in the pantry and then once that's gone, I'm ready to figure out the spice mix again. And when I do, I'll bring you guys along for that. Um, but we're going to go with it. So to this, I need to add half a cup of milk. And the thing I love about these cupcakes, like I said, is it is they are so, so incredibly moist. And I attribute that to this zucchini bread jam. And especially, I think these would make good, just good muffins. I do put ice in it, put a cream cheese icing on them. But you absolutely, absolutely don't have to do that. And I think if you didn't do that, they would make a really good, like, breakfast muffin. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll see if I like it without, how, how much I like it without the cream cheese icing. Because I know I really like it. I mean, cream cheese icing makes everything better, right? So I'm going to add half a cup of milk, two eggs. The recipe calls for half a cup of butter. I'm just going to add oil instead of the butter. And a teaspoon of vanilla. Teaspoon of vanilla. And then like I said, I'm just going to add, ooh, let's do avocado oil. I'm just going to add just some avocado oil. Okay, that's probably good. That's almost empty. I need to fill that up. Okay. Then I'm going to pop this top, and we're going to add this jar 
of zucchini bread jam. And this is 100% a jelly, this jam. So you could put it on toast. I've done it. I'd rather have fruit jelly on my food. You can put it on pancakes. It might actually be good like in a pancake batter. That might be another way I can use it in a pancake batter. I might have to try that one. But for now, it's going to be cupcake. into the freezer. So this weekend I had a cookout, I had burgers, and I had some burger buns left over. Now these would be so easy to let sit on the counter and just kind of mold. Um, they are a little squished. They did get a little squished in my shopping cart, but that's okay. They're still completely perfect buns. So rather than let these go bad and I'm no longer in the mood for, uh, for burgers, I'm going to throw these in the freezer. So what I'm doing is I'm actually taking them apart because this way when I, let's say I just want one burger, it's just me one night, I just want one burger, I can just pull out one bun. I don't have to defrost the whole bag. So I like doing that before I freeze them, just separating them. Bread freezes wonderfully. The only thing I've noticed is that like this is frozen, I get this out from the freezer and I put it on the counter like this. The water works, like it will defrost and it will defrost like down. What that means is like the bottom will get soggy. So when I'm defrosting it, I do try to keep like an eye on it and I rotate it. Um, and if you're on it and you can kind of get it out, let it deep, let it sit for 10 minutes and then flip it over. It kind of helps it from getting soggy. Um, so, or put it on the grill too, if you, cause you want to grill a bun, put it on after it's defrosted a little bit and then that'll help evaporate the water too. But, that is something to be mindful of, but I've had really good success freezing my bun. Uh, hold on, let me, let me stack them so they're flat and not in a pile. And so I'm just freezing them in the bag they came in, and I'm going to put this bag in another bag. And then this way they don't go to waste. And so I make all of my own bread. However, I have given myself the caveat that I don't need to make my own burger buns and my own hamburger buns. Um, I've never tried. Could I do it? Absolutely. I'm sure with some practice. But especially if it's like a Friday, it's a Friday. Let's say I want to have friends over this evening for a cookout. I don't want to feel like, oh my God, I don't have buns. Um, I need to make, I need to make buns. I don't want to have that, um, responsibility and, and then feel like I can't have friends over or I can't do the burgers and the hot dogs that I want to do because they don't have the buns. So I've always said from day one, I'll make all my own bread, but I will buy my burger buns and my hot dog buns and it'll be just fine. So my kombucha or my hot water has boiled, the sugar has melted, so I've added eight, I've added eight tea bags to it. So that's just going to steep and cool. You don't want to add the so we're going to take a cup of the old kombucha and add it into this. You don't want to do that while it's still hot. And you definitely don't want to add this to the scooby because it will kill the scooby while it's still hot. So we're just going to let that go, come down to room temperature, and then later this evening we'll combine the two. The cupcakes are in the oven at 375 for about 25 minutes. I'll check them around the 25 minute mark and see if they're done. Now we're going to move on to this. All we're going to do is put this in the freezer. i got a big old honking pork loin. This was, this is a Boma Center Cut pork loin that I got on sale. So this was, again, this was originally $17 for this pork loin. I got it on sale for $8. So that's something that I like to do. It's a great way for me to fill my freezer with meat and save the money. Um, I'm not to the point where I can buy like a half a cow, a half a pig. I One, I don't have the money. Two, I don't go through that much meat that that would be useful for me. 
and I really want to buy my meat from a local butcher. However, when it, right now I'm, at, I'm, I'm concerned about the prices, and when I can get something like this for $8 just from the grocery store, I'm going to do it, and I'm not going to feel bad about it. So what I'm going to do, because this is a big pork loin for me um, to have, I'm actually, for me, I'm going to cut into three pieces, and that way I, I like leftovers, but I like to do leftovers like two or three times, and then I'm kind of done. So even if I pull a pork, one of these pork loins out and I have it with company, I'm still going to have leftovers, and I don't really want to have that much leftovers. So I'm going to cut this pork loin into three separate pieces, and then that'll be the perfect amount for me if I want to do like a pork and sauerkraut or a pulled pork barbecue or something like that. That'll be the perfect amount. So we're going to get this guy cut up, then wrapped up, and then he's going to go in the freezer. These are wrapped and ready to go into the freezer. So I'm going to take these and put these in the freezer. I'm going to take my bread and put my bread into the freezer. I have one, two, three, four, I have five bags of 
frozen strawberries and my mom has frozen strawberries that she doesn't know what to do with so I told her she's bringing me hers down today and we're just going to make a big old batch of jam with these. Um, I have fresh strawberries in the freezer or not in the freezer, fresh strawberries in my outside fridge. That's going to be the second part of the video because we're doing some really exciting things with those and I'm, I'm actually so excited for that. So for these from last year, I'm just going to make some jam. I actually should have made the jam over the winter. I didn't. It is what it is. This is a great thing too, especially if you're busy. Buy them, freeze them. They freeze great. I'm going to put them in the pot from frozen. But this is something you can buy this stuff now, freeze it, and you don't have to worry about if you're busy. You don't have to worry about making the jam right now. You can wait until the winter when you're not too busy, and then you can make jam in the winter. That was my plan. That did not happen. <laughs> So I'm just going to get all of these into a big old pot and we're going to start making these into jam. Now, that is something I'm doing differently this year that I'm actually excited about. So, so I've been canning for a couple years at this point. I think, I think this will probably be my fifth solid year of canning. But before I started canning, I did learn how to make pickles. Um, I don't actually, oh yeah, I guess I did. I did can a couple of pickles, not many. And I made jam, but I never honestly really canned it. So when it comes to pickles, if I want a pickle, I always go for the Velastic Zesty Bread and Butter Pickles. Always. They're my favorite. They're delicious. Love them. I had a, I don't know what this was. <laughs> I had a um, dinner party back in the fall, and the whole dinner party was just all the things I had made. I had homemade breads and I had my homemade jam that I just made freezer fridge jam the one day. Um, but I, so I had all this homemade stuff and then a couple of cheeses and meats that I had bought. But I had a jar of pickles that my friend had gifted me and I remember being upset that I couldn't say like everything on the table was mine. <laughs> so um, one of my favorite things to do is these kind of charcuterie board um, meals, especially when you have a lot of people. So I worked towards getting all of those things either canned or preserved in some way. A couple weeks ago I canned hummus for the first time, so when I have to deliver I can serve them my own hummus. Um, so a lot of these different things. So I'm going to be doing jam, can and jam, so I don't need to make a batch when I have friends coming over and I can still say this is my jam. And same with my pickles. So when I have friends over I can serve my stuff and because it gives me a little set of pride, a little bit of pride, and everyone in my life knows me. They know when they walk into my house, they ask, they, a lot of them like, still ask if the plant is real. <laughs> like I have a whole bunch of plants and they'll be like, oh, is that real? And I'm like, it's me. Of course it's real. <laughs> and then with a lot of my food, I do take a lot of pride in knowing that like I made this 100% from scratch. or like, this is mine and I grew it. So pickles and jam are something that I've never really done. I've done it, but I've never, like, it's never been in my yearly repertoire. So we're going to do that for the first time this year. So I'm excited to get this first batch of jam made and canned on the shelf. I'm going to do strawberry, I'm hoping to do raspberry, well I'm not hoping, I'm going to do raspberry, and I'm also going to do, hopefully, the one I'm hoping for is blackberry. Um, I have a big old blackberry bush that puts off so many blackberries, and I never get a single berry because of the birds. The birds are on it and the birds steal it. So this year I'm determined <laughs> to get blackberries from my blackberry bush to my own blackberry jam. So, I've been yip yapping too much. My cupcakes are done. Let me get them out. <laughs> and then we're going to get these strawberries into a pot and get them to start cooking. Look how good they look. Never made your own jam, I think it's time to start. <laughs> jam is so easy to make and you don't have to can it. If you're not into canning, you a thousand percent can make jam for the fridge. It is so easy to make. You can control your flavors and you can really control the sugars, which is my favorite part of making jam. I don't think my pot is going to be big enough. So I make my own jam and I am not a big sugar person. I don't like a lot of sugar. So I don't add a lot of sugar and then what that means is I can really taste the fruit 
of what I'm using. So when I make strawberry jam, you can really taste the strawberries and not the um, just the, the artificial sugar. And you can do different combinations. So you could do like a strawberry mint jam. That would be delicious. You could. I might actually do that with this, with this one batch. I might actually try that. That sounds delicious. Um, strawberry lemon. You could you could really play with the flavors. I like to do a mixed berry. So I just I did do a mixed berry this winter. I did strawberry and blueberry combined. I think I threw a couple of raspberries in there too, and just made a delicious mixed berry jam. That was really really good. Um, and you can just make it. It's so easy. I'm just gonna put this on the stove, add a little bit of water to it, put the lid on, and let it cook down. Once it's a little cooks down, I'll add some sugar, a little bit of lemon juice, and that's essentially it. I will add pectin. There are some questions on if you add pectin, if you should add pectin to jam or not. I do add pectin, and I will be honest. I don't like a lot of chunks in my jam, so I will kind of mash it as much as I can, but. It, I don't strain it. If you wanted just like the jelly with no chunks, you should strain out um, your sauce before you add the pectin. But we'll, we'll do it together and I'll show you how I do it. But it's super, super easy and I highly recommend if you're not doing it, start doing it. It could not be any easier. The flavor of fresh strawberry with fresh strawberry jam. It is fantastic. And you don't buy the stuff in the grocery store. Right now, strawberries are in season. Go buy the local homegrown strawberries. They're going to taste a thousand times better, I assure you. So I'm just going to have this on low. I'm going to put the lid on. And I'm just going to let these strawberries, they're completely frozen. I'm going to let them start cooking down. And once they're cooked down a good bit, we'll add the sugars and all that fun stuff. I'm going to get these muffins onto my cooling rack. I got these smell so good. I need a fork. Ooh. These smell so, so good. They're very hot. <laughs> you can smell both the spice cake. And you can smell my bread, my zucchini bread jam. You can really smell the cranberries are coming out. I don't know how you can smell cranberries, but I smell cranberries. And because it has zucchini in it, I claim that it's healthy. <laughs> I'm saying it's a, it's a vegetable side. This would be, so I used to work at an airport and at, in the restaurant. And the, all the meals always came with the muffins. So it's for breakfast and your lunches. It always came with the muffins. So I'm just kind of thinking this would be like a great muffin to like put on the side of like a dinner. It has vegetables in it. It's your little sweet. could be like a great like once you finish your meal, eat this muffin. And it's not quite, without any icing, it's not quite a cupcake. Mm. I like it. I'm gonna move these somewhere where they can cool, and then we're just gonna wait for that those strawberries to cook down. So I'll see you when they're ready. It's been about an hour. I ate lunch and I just kind of let the strawberries cook down. Now because they were frozen and they had ice crystals on them, it did create a good amount of water, but that's okay. I didn't drain any of it out. I just let it all kind of simmer away until the strawberries were completely soft. And then I just used my immersion blender, but you could use a blender or your food processor. And I did give it a fairly good pulse. I do have a couple pieces of strawberries in here, but it is fairly smooth. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the jelly for this. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking though while I was blending this, you could absolutely do so much stuff with this blended juice. You could freeze it or can it just like this and then you have strawberry juice to add to kombuchas or to maybe add to cocktails. You could add strawberry juice to like icing. I actually might do the second batch of strawberries. See how many much jam this makes me. And I might actually do that. Just freeze some of this juice as juice and then you could add it to things like cakes and icings, um, puddings, all kinds of desserts. Put it over ice cream. Just this kind of strawberry juice is actually going to be really good. And while I'm thinking that, let's give it a taste. Let's see what it, how good it tastes just as is. 
before we add any sugar to it. So it's just strawberries, nothing else. Looking hot. <laughs> in sugar and I like to taste test as we go so I probably added about 10 tablespoons well that wasn't actually a lot we'll add a little bit more I just like to kind of go in so I get the flavor that I like I don't like things too sweet I don't have the heat on. I'm kind of just like letting this go. I should turn the heat on, but. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. Um, my muffins have cooled down and I just had lunch. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have a muffin for dessert because I want to see if I'm okay with it like this or if I want to add the cream cheese frosting this time. Mm. They're really good. Um, I'll be honest, I'm feeling a little lazy. I have a lot more things I want to do today. And so, what currently, right this moment, I'm not in the mood to make cream cheese icing. So, I think I'm going to leave them just like this. They're incredibly moist, taste delicious. So, as of right now, I'm not going to make icing. I'm just going to leave them like this, and they're going to be just muffins. And I'm cutting down some calories and some sugar. So. <laughs> I think it's going to be a win-win. Mm-hmm. These are good. Okay. <clears throat> I ate my muffin while I ate my muffin. I just kind of stirred this. Letting that sugar dissolve because it's still very hot. Ah, cheek. Mm. That tastes much better. We're going to add a little bit more sugar. The thing I like my le my level of sugar that I add into it is <clears throat> I just try to accentuate the natural strawberry taste. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. I just want to accentuate the natural strawberry taste and that little bit of sugar did. So I want to get the taste where I want it, and then we'll add in the pectin, turn the heat back on, and let it start cooking to start setting up into our jam. Mm. Mm. Mm, that's so good. So I like to add just enough sugar that that strawberry taste kind of gives you like that smack when you taste it. It is perfect. We are on point. The slight problem, I only have one thing of pectin. So we're going to see how far this goes. So I'm going to add my box, my thing of pectin, and I use a sugar free pectin. And then give it a stir. I didn't realize that I was this low on pectin. I wouldn't have started this project without more pectin. So you want to give it a good stir. All of those chunks broken down. So I'm hoping one box of pectin is going to be enough.
So I'm just going to let this cook for a few minutes and I'm going to go install my window air conditioner for downstairs because it is warm in here and I'm hot. <laughs> so I'm going to let that cook for just a few minutes, get the air conditioner installed, and then when I come back, uh, I'm just going to, in order to sample it to see if I have enough pectin in it, if it's cooked enough, it's going to set up enough, we'll just put a little bit into a container and put it in the freezer and that way it'll cool down. When it's hot, you'll never see the consistency of it to see what it's going to be like when it's cooled. So you want to put it in the fridge or the freezer. I do the freezer because it cools it down faster. And then I can see if I have enough pectin or not. If I don't have enough pectin and I can't find a spare box in my pantry, I'm going to have to go to the store and get some. It's, this is not something that I'm going to let sit for a couple of hours until I eventually get out and get to the store. It would have to be kind of an, an immediate, an immediate field trip. So. Be back in a few minutes and fingers crossed that's enough back in. This jam tastes delicious. It is more on the runny side, I'll be completely honest. However, however, I think that's totally okay. Um, I have a vet appointment for Sawyer for her monthly shot in an hour, and I want to get this. Well, I don't want to get this can. I don't think I can like let jelly set and then kind of reheat it and then reset it. I don't really want to mess with that. So I don't have time to run to the store and get more pectin. I should have thought that through before I made this. I honestly didn't realize I was low. However, with all of that said, I think the fact that this is on the runnier side, that's completely fine. It's going to go on toast and muffins and then on ice cream and stuff and I think it's completely fine. It's thicker, but that's a little on the runnier side. I don't think anyone is going to complain. So, I definitely don't have enough jars, but we're going to see how far I can get with the jars that I have up here. And then I might have to go downstairs and get some more. I have a big old pot of strawberry jam. I have the water bath canner on, so we're going to water bath it. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm actually going to take it off of my towel. I had my jars drying on a cute little towel and fruit juice will stain. So I definitely want to get it off of my towel so I don't get strawberry jam on my cute little chicken towel. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to fill it up to half an inch of headspace. I have washed these jars. Let's go ahead and just get them. See how far we get with the chores that I brought up. I'm not going to get very far. <laughs> this is not surprising if you know me at all, but I didn't have enough jars. <laughs> I don't ever like when I decide I'm going to do something, it's never like, okay, like, let's make sure we have all the materials we need before we get started. A hundred percent no. It's, let's get started. And when we run out of what we need, we'll come up with a plan then. <laughs> so I don't have enough half pint jars. So I just threw, um, I did three pint jars. And, oh, I just dipped my paper towel into the jam. And that's going to be okay, the three pint jars. They'll be great for especially like on ice cream and oatmeal and yogurt. Make a um, strawberry jam bar, crumb bar. They're really yummy. That's okay. We'll use them for our big projects. So I'm going to get some lids on. And then the half pints go for 10 minutes. I didn't see in the ball book how long the pints go, but we'll do the pints, we'll double it, we'll do the pints for 20 minutes, just in a water bath canner, and then we'll be done, we'll probably be done right around the time it is for me to get Sawyer and hit the road, go get her shot, and come back. If you don't want to can it, absolutely, at this point, you can just put it directly in the fridge and it'll set in the fridge. 
and it will keep in the fridge for a while, for a nice while. You just want to make sure the water is covering the jars by about an inch. Perfect. So that's going to go for 20 minutes. Let me put the timer right now. Oh, it'll go to 205. So we got three pints and eight half pints and about a quarter of a pint. Uh, yeah, a quarter of a pint that we'll eat in fresh Eden this weekend. And I think that's going to be for today. We had, um, we still have a lot more that we're going to do today, but those couple of taps took a little bit longer than I thought they would. We did have some breaks. We installed the downstairs air conditioner, and then my dad did stop down, and we got my brand new air conditioner in my room hooked up and set up and put together, and that was a little bit of a challenge. But so we got stuff done. Um, so we're going to end this here. And then thank you guys for joining me, but stay tuned. I have a whole bunch of fresh strawberries in the garage fridge that I'm about to go get. And we're going to do something super, super exciting with them. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss that. Thank you guys for joining me, keeping me comfy in the kitchen today. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye, friends.